Whiskey. I'm Mike. And I'm Dan. And this week is the art of the pick. And what I mean by that is this is private barrel slash store pick week. Yes. Which is one of my favorite things in the world. And I think it's one of Mike's favorite things in the world. Yeah, I think they're really unique. It's a good way to get either the same whiskey in a different variant or completely different whiskeys that aren't otherwise available to you. And what I mean by that is with the exception of this guy here, um... All of these are like High West Double Rye, Balconish True Blue, Knob Creek 14. They're, they all have regular styles. However, these are all finished and aged and tweaked in a little bit different manner, exclusive to whatever store, which we're not going to reveal which stores these are for I think legal, I, I, just not, reasons. Not legal reasons. I think it's yeah, just, just, just like we just want the bottles. These are all store picks from... From private chains yeah. in the state of New Jersey. Yeah, and they actually come around to us as store own managers. Well, Dan is store manager. I used to do it, and they will sample us on what well, they usually bring like five three. or six whiskeys. Three to, yeah, three to six they would bring, depending yeah. on what it was. And you know they'll they'll either go to the head of the chain, each store manager, or a combination of both, and they'll kind of take a tally on which ones everyone picked, what has the most picks, and then that particular whiskey then gets a whole or that particular store gets a whole barrel of that particular whiskey so first one is i think th this is all right so first of all we'll just do this not sponsored by high west buffalo trace and or weller knob creek balconis or redwood empire nope uh, i just have a normal it's fine yeah. today <laughs> uh, or volcom so i have been looking for a high west bottle pick for barrel pick for the longest time and it sounds super superficial mm -hmm. but i wanted the black label I just thought it was cool. It's I think different. It looks cooler. I didn't like. I have every single High West I can get in this state that's not one of the co pre-made cocktails, aside yeah. from the Double Rye. So this Double Rye I completed my set. I yep. eight, it's eight bottles that you can get. And what's really unique about the High West, um, the High West Barrel Pick, I'll go into this while Dan gets us uh, situated. Is as you may have known, and I may have mentioned, I work with the company who sells this product in this state. Even I don't know when these are coming out because barrel picks and store picks are so exclusive. Really only the store knows and the producer knows. And maybe I'll get a call like, hey, Mike, we should take these cases to whatever. They're never in our inventory. They're never in our warehouse. So, like, again, store picks, barrel picks are really exclusive and a really cool way to get some products yeah, it's that usually between are a, not well known. Like a key account manager and a chain of the chain's yeah. uh, COO and or like whiskey purchaser. Yeah, That's exactly. usually it. It has very little to do. Obviously, you need a distributor to legally sell it, mm -hmm. but it has very little to do with salesmen and stuff like that. It's it's a very like cut out the middleman type thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, which is, you know, it's good just because like I said, you're getting a unique product. It's, yep. a, one, it's a one of one product. Yeah, and especially this one, because this one is different than Double Rye. This isn't just a barrel pick. It's actually aged in Fumé Blanc. Fumé Blanc, a.k.a. Sauvignon Blanc barrels for yep. 11 months. Yeah, so it's way different than the regular Double Rye. I like High West's like, barrel program for that reason, uh, because they offer like so much uh, variability in their picks. Yeah. Like, you can finish a High West cask in whatever the hell you want. Yep. And you can finish it for however long you want, which obviously your price goes up. You can finish any of their whis any of their core whiskeys mm -hmm. that you want, which would be American Prairie, Rendezvous, Campfire, and the Double Rye. Um, it's this to me is like it actually looks like green tea, same color, a little, but this tastes like gr very green tea esque to me. It does very herbal, uh, very light. Um, you get a little of that honey sweetness. It is very very light. So. Not to knock this whiskey or any for that it's matter. A, this is the same gripe he had with the Penelope Rosé. Yes. Yeah. Again, when you're putting a when you're aging a bourbon in a very 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 light wine cask, in this case Sauvignon Blanc, that flavor is not going to take very easily. The bourbon 100% will overpower it. However, High West did a good thing, and they aged it for almost a whole year, so that does give it a chance for it that definitely those flavors it. to seep in. Yeah. And I think that's why we get that green tea note, because yeah. Fumé Blancs are naturally citrusy. Green tea usually has a citrus-type note, because it's a very, very young tea leaf. It's not a matured tea leaf, so you get some of the... So it, it shows through, but don't expect it to be very, very overpowering. Yeah, it's not going to like like melt your face off as far no. as like altering the flavor. Like We'll, we'll do a side-by-side -side with a regular double ride. To see, yeah, I like, should, that was my fault. The variation. I should have brought it. I didn't. Next one up, 
Uh, Mike actually helped us acquire these, which is the Weller Foolproof. This is under the description of how barrel proofs, or barrel proofs, <laughs> barrel picks, or store picks, can help you get unicorn whiskey that is yes. heavily allocated much easier because it gives that store and or that chain 30 to 35 yes. cases to play with. Um, yes, it's a, it's a very expensive barrel, but also you know this product will sell. Yeah, and the store that I found this at, they move Buffalo Trace products, so it's no surprise that they were approached with this as one of their choices to pick. So there's nothing different about this. This nope. is regular well or full proof. It's yep. same old, same old. Just the only thing is this particular store had the chance to buy a whole barrel, thus yielding them a ton of cases, a ton of barrels to sell. So your Knob Creek 15 year is like a hundred and bucks. So yeah. somewhere in there, that area. So this is a 14 year old barrel pick, which like, so basically their, their barrel picks are going to be their single barrel platform, obviously, which every barrel pick is a single barrel version of whatever whiskey you're getting. Or bourbon you're getting so this is a 14 year old single barrel for 60 dollars yeah so it's it's basically a 35 percent savings and this is the cork is a nightmare dude Don't <laughs> yourself. and like the amount of like customization you can do as far as like where your barrels from they go into extreme detail as far as like uh warm side cold side like light side dark side uh middle like middle left middle right middle up dead center like mm -hmm. and obviously depending on where you get your barrel the price is going to increase or decrease anything yep. towards the bottom is going to be a little less the middle of the rack for knob creek is usually their sweet spot yeah that's usually where you get these big cherry like cherry wood bombs mm -hmm. i know it sounds is ridiculous but it it is true it where this these barrels are in the rick houses it, impa uh, yeah, it impacts the whiskey. Um, Single barrels are completely dependent on climate mm -hmm. and basically external forces to shape the whiskey. Because once the, the liquid or the new make goes into the barrel, you're at the hands of everything else out that's outside the barrel. That you can't control. Well, you can to a degree. You can rotate um, the barrel and whatever, but that only does so much. Yeah. But if you have like a really cold winter, like... The wood contracts a lot more, and it exactly. doesn't open up, so there's less wood contact. You know, if you have a really hot summer, the wood opens up completely, and you get a lot of wood contact, and you get a really big woody bourbon. Yeah. Like, there's so much that goes into the science of just throwing a barrel on a rack mm -hmm. that it's pretty. It, it, it's daunting to even go into it. Which yeah. we're not. And anything about. else could happen. You know, what about um, what was it, Jim Beam, where the whole Rick House collapsed? Or? Seven. That was no. That was seventeen ninety two. Oh, that was seven. Yeah, that was yeah. Where the the thing collapsed. There's. Yeah. You know, maybe it's temperature controlled to the best it can be, but something yeah. happens, that goes out, now it's not. Makers 46, uh, Rick House is the only one I know that's temperature controlled. Makers 46 keeps their Rick House at 51 degrees. Oh, that's pretty unique. 1792 also had their other, one of their other Rick Houses hit by a fucking tornado, and they sold their, wow. they sold those barrels as barrel picks, labeling them tornado pick. That's cool. Which is cool, as, that's so cool, and like, it's so, and like, that's very geeky. Mm -hmm. um, it does nothing for the flavor. No. It did nothing. It just meant the barrel was curled a hundred feet and it didn't break. <laughs> it survived. It's so like, yep, that's a that's a good barrel. <laughs> oh, it smells. Like, I didn't know it's a vanilla. On it's the vanilla on the nose. It's just a. This is like a classic robust bourbon. Yeah. Like, there's no way to describe it. Like, not to like give it more than what it is. It, like, this is like prototypical Kentucky bourbon. This is like un Ooh, yeah. untainted. Un, uh, what's the, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, unmanipulated okay. bourbon. To yeah, the, this is just straight, I mean. It's 120 proof, I think. Oak, vanilla, a little bit of cherry. These are, it's all your typical bourbon notes, just straightforward. I get slight bit of eucalyptus. A little. Uh, and then I get cherry, and then I get a lot of wood. I get a yeah, lot I, of there's wood. a lot of wood contact on this bourbon. And the portion. ASMR fans out there, this is probably one of the best cork pops you'll ever hear. Where's the mic? Ready? It's so smooth. All right. I like the little squeak when you put it put it in an app, too. So I own... You're in a lot of Balconis. I have four bottles of Balconis. This is my favorite bottle of Balconis that I own. Oh, I got water in here. Hold right. And, uh... Oh, wait, I gotta get the bottle in too. I just, I just did the cork pop and did nothing. Uh, so that would be your tag there. And, yeah, it's cash strength as well. Awesome. So with barrel picks, you also have the options of doing cast strength expressions. Like Old Forester offers a 
a hundred proof single barrel and they offer a cash strength single barrel. And obviously if you go with a cash strength option, it is exponentially more expensive because of your evaporation rate. The higher proof something gets, the more evaporation you get due to the heat during fermentation yeah. or distillation, however you want to say it. Um, so yeah, there's, these are all variables. Like as far as like, as you as a consumer, when you're looking for a barrel pick, you want to take into consideration. So you know if it's cash rank, it's more money. You know if it's going to be your typical, you know, proof mm -hmm. that it's, you normally find it at. It's going to be kind of close to what you're going to pay normally. Yeah. But yeah, Mike hasn't tried this. He's gonna, this is a I blind taste for him on camera. So cheers, buddy. Cheers. This is the last whiskey here. No. All right. I get a lot of cinnamon sugar on the nose. The nose is very bourbony, and the cool thing about the Balconis barrel picks Ooh, are that Balconis typically is. A blending house. They distill their own yep. liquid, but they blend everything together. They don't really offer single barrel options besides their barrel pick. So this is a single barrel option from a blending house. I'm sorry, this smells like an Annie Ann cinnamon sugar pretzel. It's so good. The nose is so good. If you don't know what an Annie Ann cinnamon but sugar pretzel is, you should. There's a little. And that's what this smells like. There's a little smoke, just kind of creeping up at behind end, it yeah. at the end. If this is my favorite whiskey on my shelf, personally, right now, for the price. Like, it's just such a freaking bombshell. Ooh. It tastes like cinnamon sugar. So every Balconis has, like, this slight little, like, musty note mm -hmm. to it, uh, or barnyardy, rustic right. note. I get a lot of... Like I said, palates can differ. To me, this tastes straight up cinnamon sugar. This is good. I get the cinnamon for sure. I hundred percent cinnamon. Maybe enough. more like a cinnamon gingerbread. I don't yeah. know. It's I get the cinnamon, but I good. to me like there's very like somehow Balconas even with their single barrels without blending anything they still get this trademark initial palate hit that is yeah. like this slightly rustic note. Like if uh, like you walk into a barn, it's yeah. just it's it's just through and through. Even their their rye somehow has it. I feel like if you took the Balmorea, added more cinnamon. That's what this. You kind of get what that's. Yeah. Pretty much what this is, and like, it's the Balmoray is a hundred and it's like a hundred and seventy dollar bottle. This is yeah. sixty, so it's like yeah, two so different for sixty bucks. This is it's a steal. So anybody who I gotta put this up. Ugh. This is top for me. This yeah, is this really is top, top for me. Yeah. I a little just so I've said I said this in the last episode. Five out of the last six whiskeys I bought are from Texas. Dude, Texas is, is absolutely killing. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, they're killing it. That's all I'm saying is like Texas is doing something that the rest of the nation is not doing right now. And you know what, Texas? Don't tell us, don't tell anyone what you're doing that's different because you're you got you got it. You're, and I, you're you in know, the game. And not to knock anybody else, I just like I, I I'm on like I get into these like kind of sprees of like types of whiskey I buy or something mm -hmm. I'm looking for. Like you know, right now I'm on a Texas whiskey kick. Yeah, because they're. they're Again, they're killing it. Exactly. So. And, and you have purists out there that be like, oh, it's not real bourbon because it ain't from Kentucky. Or, oh, it's not real whiskey it's from Tennessee. Which the law says something else. But. The law does say something else, and the proof is in the liquid. I mean, this is just yeah, so phenomenal. Anybody who is a purist, I would love to have a blind tasting and just show you that, like... And you know what? I think the climate has a lot to do with it. Yeah, They definitely. have a lot of dry heat. It's very there. arid there. Yeah. Whereas, like, when you get more to the East Coast, I don't even know what you would consider Kentucky and... Tennessee, because they're not coastal, but they're like no, no, uh, they're, they're like close enough to the coast. I don't know. It's definitely he. It's definitely it's not as humid as like the East Coast no, it's there, not but as humid it's like shit. Kentucky is like kind of your prototypical climate you want to age whiskey in, because it's. But I feel like this heat in Texas is doing something different. Well, what the it's heat in Texas does, stuff. it's similar to what happens in India. The aging doesn't have to be as long. Yeah. Because the there's never it's not cold. It's no. not. You're so right. you never get the contraction. You're never losing wood contact. No. But whereas Kentucky, the winters are still cold there, so your barrels contract, and you're the same thing with your whiskey. You also don't lose as, you don't lose as much whiskey because no, there's don't. no evaporation. But also the thing with that's also why private barrels you're gonna get from Texas are gonna have a lower yield as well because there is more evaporation. But you're gonna yeah. get not it's not higher quality. You're just getting something that's you know this is aged thirty six months, but it tastes like it's been in a barrel for six years. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm saying. It's, I don't doubt that these producers in Texas are know what they're doing and are really putting out a fine whiskey, but I do think the climate overall has a lot yeah. to do with it. And Same with Nevada, uh, Nevada with the smoke wagon. Yeah. It's yeah. like... That may be MGP, but the like, weather is 
It's a big factor. It's a big and factor you can see it. In, in this. And uh, we didn't say this in the video, so if you have any questions about any of this, like uh, please comment on the video. Yeah. Uh, we'll answer any questions. Uh, we may be wrong in some stuff we say. If we're wrong, let us know. We'll uh, we'll do our research next time. We'll go yes. back to the drawing board and correct ourselves. Also, please like, uh, subscribe, and share this video with anybody. Uh, barrel picks are something that's very near and dear to my heart, very yeah. near and dear to Mike's heart. It's I like them. The ultimate opportunity to show how unique and how uh, vast of a uh, not vast. Uh, I guess how many different, diverse how, yeah diverse portfolio you have in your distillery. Yeah. Um, because like normally you would like as a as a uh, vendor or a retailer like myself, you would want to pick something that's as close to the original product as you can get because mm -hmm. you don't want to alienate those drinkers that love the original product. But as a whiskey drinker, you I want get different. I want something weird. Yeah, like, you I'm, want unique. Yeah, let's get let's get weird. Like seriously, like yeah, like I the balconist, let's get weird. Because there's no point to buying a store pick that's just the same thing as the regular. Like, yeah, you could just buy the regular. Like, and I, I understand both sides of I do. the of the I argument. Percent. Uh, so I'll be devil's advocate here as far as like I. It's more sellable to sell something yeah. that's closer to the original, but to me, it's just way cooler to see. Like, it's kind of like. Me telling the story, like, all right, show me what the what the hell you can do. Yeah, let's see, what, let's see what you can do. Yeah, and it's limited, it's exclusive, it's yep. unique, it's truly a unicorn bottle because nowhere else will have it. Yeah, so. it's it's a one of a kind. Like, obviously, like you might have a someone might pick the barrel directly next to it, but that barrel's gonna taste. It's all it's they're all like different. little snowflakes. Like, yep, everything, every single snowflake's different. Every single barrel's different. Like, mm -hmm. you know, something different can happen inside that barrel. You don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think. We'll wrap it up there because we're probably at about 23 minutes right now. Yeah, we're probably pushing pretty far. So, so we don't know how much we're going to trim out. Either way, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Yes. Uh, I love drinking this stuff. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this so much. That's that's really good. For 60 bucks, you could buy that all day long. All four of these are amazing whiskeys. Obviously, the Weller has a pedigree. Knob Creek, you know, you know Fred mm -hmm. No. <laughs> yeah. Fred No is a legend. Bookers, stuff like that. Like I, Without question. Like, this is more highly selected than Booker's. Yes. For the Knob Creek. High West is innovative, and they are they make one-of-a-kind whiskeys, and whiskey blends and Balcones, just, they just do their thing. Yep. Uh, so, send us off, Mike. All right, guys. Once again, please like, comment, share this video, and subscribe to the channel. And with that, cheers.